हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू ची वाई एस हाउ आर यू आई होप यू आर डूइंग वेल सो फ्रेंड्स एज यू नो दैट ऑन आर चैनल वी आर करंटली रनिंग द क्लासेज ऑफ यू पी एस सी सिविल सर्विसेज एक्सपीरियंट्स दो स्टूडेंट्स हु आर प्लानिंग टू गिव एग्जाम इन टू थाउजेंड दे हैव कम टू राइट प्लेटफॉर्म वी विल कवर योर इंटायर सिलेबस बाई बाई मार्च टू ऑन दिस प्लेटफॉर्म इंक्लूडिंग योर स्टार्टिंग पोर्शन एज वेल एज करंट फेयर सो करंटली वी आर परसुइंग द इन्वायरमेंट एंड इन इकोलॉजी and today we are going to take the seventh lecture of this this topic already six lectures have been uploaded on our channel and uh, the students uh, who don't have uh, who uh, who have not seen the these lectures are requested to see it because this the seventh lecture will only make sense if you have seen the previous six lectures the lectures are also available in hindi lectures hindi mein bhi available hain those students who can't understand english can see the videos in hindi jo english nahi samajh sakte wo hindi mein bhi videos dekh sakte hain तो फ्रेंड्स लेट्स स्टार्ट द डिस्कशन बिफोर डिस्कशन आई वांट टू से वन थिंग दैट द मंडे द लेक्चर ऑफ द लेक्चर वाज नॉट अपलोडेड ऑन अपलोडेड ऑन मंडे ड्यू टू सम पर्सनल इश्यूज सो प्लीयर प्लीज बियर विद अस देर आर देर वर सर्टन सर्कमस्टांसिस ड्यू टू विच आई वाज नॉट एबल टू अपलोड द लेक्चर सो फ्रेंड्स बिफोर स्टार्टिंग डिस्कशन आई वॉन्ट टू टेल यू दैट दिस इज आर टेलीग्राम चैनल हेयर यू कैन ज्वाइन इट वी विल वी पोस्ट आर ऑल लेटेस्ट इनिशियटिव on this telegram channel and also we communicate with you on this telegram channel any initiative that we start whether on youtube whether on telegram or on any other platform we all we uh, we inform about that uh, that thing those things on this this channel so you can join this channel and can stay uh, can can remain updated with our new initiative so let's start discussion friends see the today what we what we are going to discuss is the biogeochemical cycles so already we have covered in detail man so many functions of uh, ecosystem like energy flow and uh, other other functions like uh, ecological succession so biogeochemical cycles are also an important function of ecosystem the ecosystem in which we live in which the organism sustain themselves or uh, interact with the in, uh, surrounding environment the third function of this is the biogeochemical cycle so what is biogeochemical cycle we must know about this see but biogeochemical cycle or cycling of substances is a pathway by which a chemical substance moves through biotic and abiotic compartments of earth see the earth has biotic as well as abiotic compartments biotic is the living organisms abiotic is the non living compartment so this uh, these uh, these uh, these the, new, the various minerals or chemicals that move through these biotic and abiotic compartments and they complete the process they in a cyclic manner such such process is called biogeochemical cycle so the important there are many biogeochemical cycles as such but the important ones are the carbon hydrogen oxygen oxygen nitrogen phosphorus are some of the most important biogeochemical cycles why they are so important why not others are important because these all these all these minerals constitute as much as 97% of our mass the the uh, if uh, if we if we consider our body and consider our, uh, consider the mass of our body if it is 100 kg then the 97 kg weight is constituted by these minerals so this is uh, the, uh, this is why there these these chemicals these uh, these minerals are so important and we will study their cycles so in addition to this uh, uh, they make 97% of our mass of our body and if we consider the mass of entire living organisms then 95% of the mass of the entire living organism is constituted to by these minerals so these are uh, elements are always in circulation so why that's why we are saying that we are going to study the cycle what is cycle you see the cycle is a is a complete circulation so these elements are always in circulation moving from abiotic components to biotic components and then again to abiotic components so this is the by basically biogeo chemical cycle so what is the see we have covered the energy flow in previous lecture so what is the basic and now we are going to study the biogeo chemical cycles so those students who might be knowing who 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 know about the energy flow might be doubting that what is the difference between the energy flow and the biogeo chemical cycle see friends in energy flow the energy always flow from one trophic to another trophic level from from living uh, within living organisms so here only the biotic component is involved and the second thing is that there the in the energy flow is the process in which some amount of energy is always lost in the form of heat so energy is energy is lost so the energy which is available at the base trophic level first trophic level for say for example that the producer level that the same amount of energy will not be available at the top trophic level that is the top carnivore so the energy is lost in between the different trophic levels for the for the various metabolic processes as well as 
in the form of heat so but in the biogeochemical cycle these elements go through both the biotic and abiotic components in energy flow only through the biotic components whereas biogeo in biogeochemical cycles elements flow through both biotic and abiotic components so there is no loss of them the entire element or the entire nutrient or the entire chemical is circulated not even a single percent of the chemical or mineral or element is lost in the cycle uh, in the biogeochemical cycling so this is the major difference between the energy flow and the biogeochemical cycling now let's see what are the types of nutrient cycling see on the basis of replacement period they, they, we, we we categorize the nutrient cycling different types on the different basis first we will cover the replacement period and then we will cover the nature of reservoir if we see the if we see in the context of replacement period then there are two types of nutrient cycles that is one second friends sorry so there are two types of uh, uh, depending on the replacement period there are two types of cycles that is perfect cycle and the imperfect cycle cycle what is perfect cycle in perfect cycle nutrients are replaced as fast as they are utilized i by this i mean that uh, that nutrients are not lost somewhere or they are deposited for long time uh, in a, at a, some place at remote place so they are not accessible this is not the case in this in perfect cycle nutrients are are, are available continuous are, are are cycled continuously cycled and recycled continuously they are they as soon, soon as they are consumed they as soon as they are replaced so this is perfect cycle you will know about them in detail in next slides in imperfect cycle some of the nutrients are lost from the cycle and gets logged into sediments so friends i in the previous uh, slide i told you that there is no loss of the nutrients but here i'm showing say, saying that nutrients are lost so the the meaning here is that the nutrients are lost for a temporary period they are not lost for, for uh, they are not lost for always so they are well lost for temporary period and they are deposited at sediments they will all, they will again be available as is, this is not the case that they will not be available as the energy is lost is it will it is not available but in the case of nutrient cycles in in case if the nutrients is lost then it is lost for the time being and it it, it will be again available because the sediments will again come to the surface when there is crust when there is crustal uplifting take uplifting takes place or, or or through the other geomorphic processes so if you have studied the geography you might be knowing about the processes of plate tectonics so through that the uh, the, the earth earth moves and the crustal upliftment and subsidence takes place so through this process these sediments that were deposited deposited that are deposited at at present they will again be available at in future so the so this is the this is an example of imperfect cycle in which for the time being some nutrients are lost and the form in the form of sediments so after that on the basis of replacement period we have covered now we will cover on the basis of nature of reservoir see if, if we consider the source then there are two types of cycles gaseous cycle and sedimentary cycle in gaseous cycle the main reservoir is the atmosphere or the hydrosphere we, we in simple terms we can say that the uh, where is the source of the element if the source is the atmosphere or the hydrosphere then it is gaseous cycle if the if the reservoir of the element that is being cycled is the earth crust then it is sedimentary cycle now in today's lecture we will cover in detail the gaseous cycles the sedimentary cycles will be covered in the next lecture so today let's study the gaseous cycles there are very various gaseous cycles the gaseous cycle the main gaseous cycle are the water cycle carbon cycle and the nitrogen cycle which we will cover in detail uh, from, uh, you might be knowing about the water, water cycle in very much detail as as it is the most basic cycle uh, we all have read it on it, it in our in our uh, in our uh, secondary classes so let's see what is water cycle it is also known as hydrological cycle see friends what is water cycle cycle is the continuous uh, continuous uh, it, it is a continuous process so here it involves a continuous circulation of water in earth atmosphere system if we consider the earth and atmosphere system then the continuous circulation of water in this system is the hydrological cycle or water cycle so what is the force driving force behind between behind this water cycle so the driving force is the solar energy because the the first step involved in the water cycle is the evaporation so how how the evaporation takes place evaporation takes place due to heat that is provided by the sun so driving force is the solar energy we will look about in, in we will look in uh, detail about the water cycle in next slide by the diagram so you so here i have just included the text so please try to understand here 
uh, as much as you can the the better clarity will be provided by the next slide so so if the source of water if we consider the source of water where do, from where do we get water we get water from atmosphere oceans lakes rivers soils glaciers snow fields and ground water so what is the process involved what is the pro entire process in water cycle first there is evaporation and there is transpiration you might have read about this in biology that the leaves of the uh, of the plants uh, plants tra transpire and they release the water water molecules from there from the from the leaves and they, these these form in the water vapor in the atmosphere so this is the transpiration process and then then the condensation takes place clouds takes cloud cloud formation takes place and then after condensation precipitation takes place and after the precipitation deposition takes place the precip the deposition in the form of snow runoff infiltration and ground water flow so all these processes constitute the water cycle so what is the importance of water in other cycle we we have studied the water cycle we will see the diagram in next slide but what is the importance of water in other cycle see the other cycles the water cycle sustains the other cycles see if you consider the water it, it acts as an important transport transportation agent the other nutrients for their cycling depend upon the water because it acts as a transportation agent so so other nutrients are carried by the water from one place to another place it also it acts as a solvent for the other nutrients but so the, they are they are they are dissolved in the, in the water and these the water is being consumed is, is consumed by the organisms and in this way the through organisms after the after organisms die they decompose and then decompo after decomposition against the nutrients nutrients are nutrients are released into the soil so they in this way they constitute the cycle water water becomes an important transportation a uh, transport agent as well as a solvent in the uh, cycling of other nutrients so here's here is the diagram you see here Here the oceans that the evaporation takes place evaporation uh, and sun is the driving force which evaporates the water and then this water uh, evaporates and after condensation cloud formation takes place and the after condensation the pre precipitation takes place and here the precip after pre precipitation some some water is stored as ice and the, then other some some flow in the form of streams and then this this is this is runoff surface runoff and some water infiltrates into the in the into the into the ground and this here is here constitute the ground water flow and ultimately water mixes into the ocean so all this cycle i i, I hope you have uh, you have covered in your junior classes so you might be knowing about this there is nothing nothing technical in this water cycle so this is the basic water cycle so now we have completed the water cycle but friends I want to tell you one thing that these cycles must be stable and they must not be disturbed but the problem in today's times is that that the human the human interference in our atmosphere is so much that we are interfering each and every cycle so due to the interference in each and every cycle the balance that the that that particular cycle has is disturbed so if the balance is disturbed then entire ecosystem is disturbed disturbed entire the, the organisms living in it are disturbed so how the human interference is affecting the water cycle see we we practice agriculture so in agriculture we draw the ground water now but now we we are drawing the ground water to such a large extent that the that the replenishment of that ground water so the infiltration into the ground water is not, into the ground is not that much to is if we compare compare with the extraction of water from the ground so the extraction is high, large in amount but the infiltration of water is not that much so we are interfering in the water cycle in this way so ground water is being depleted uh, in a very in a far very fast manner so we can also construct dams which in uh, which hinder the natural flow of the of the rivers which affects the ecology of the these rivers and in, including the we uh, increasing and uh, through the increasing industrialization we are polluting our water industries are discharging their chemical waste one treated chemical waste into the water so this also affects the uh, fresh water uh, and uh, another process through which we interfere is the deforestation because i told you that there is a process called transpiration so the Through the transpiration, the water vapor are contributed to the atmosphere by the trees. But due to deforestation, this transpiration does not take place. And also urbanization. Through urbanization, we are polluting our water, and pollution of rivers is taking place. You you know the very uh, lively example of Ganga. How the Ganga is polluted nowadays. So this these are the interferences in the water cycle by the human being. See, if we see the evaporation has very important role. to 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 reduce the temperature of our earth 80% 86% of the glo global evaporation takes place in oceans which reduces the process Uh, which reduces the temperature of earth by the mechanism of evaporative cooling so if we are interfering in the water cycle and we disturb the balance then this evaporation will also not take place and this due to this the earth will get warmed up so th if the earth gets warmed up this, this, this so this will lead to the climate change so that if the temperature of earth will increase if this interference continued unabated so we have to 
we have to take some measures to reduce our interference in the water cycle so this is all about water cycle next see about the carbon cycle before doing the carbon cycle let's understand the importance of carbon see simply life cannot exist with, without carbon if we see the carbon ca carbon right side in the atmosphere the simply the carbon in the atmosphere has very important role in the photosynthesis because during the photosynthesis when the plants perform photosynthesis they convert the solar energy into the chemical energy so the, the, in that process uh, the, the 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 carbohydrates are produced after the photosynthesis so carbohydrates are a form of energy which which provide energy to the plants so so this this process of photosynthesis cannot take place without the without the presence of carbon so carbon in, pre, in atmosphere is not present in the free form it is present in the form of carbon dioxide so photosynthesis will not take place without carbon dioxide if photosynthesis cannot take place then then you know that plant, uh, everybody eats plants so uh, you might uh, know the concept of herbivores and carnivores so herbivores eat plants and herbivores are being eaten by the carnivores we also depend on plants for our food sources so ultimately the energy comes from the plants so if there if there are no plants if the plants have not don't have the energy then from where they will provide the energy to the other organisms so life cannot exist without the carbon so the carbon is also present in the dna deoxyribose nucleic acid the compound that carries the genetic information in the living organism so you, you see you can see the importance of carbon see if the, we see the types of carbon cycle there are two types two two types short term and long term carbon cycle if we see the short term carbon cycle it is very simple if you see that the uh, i told you that the carbon dioxide carbon is not present in the free, free form in our atmosphere it is present in the form of carbon dioxide which is being used by the plants in the process of their photosynthesis so plants utilize them in the process of their photosynthesis and this results in the formation of carbohydrate which is a form of energy in the uh, which is a which is an energy source for plants so these plants are being eaten by animals so this energy is transferred to the animals so the so animals when when animals eat the, the carbon that is utilized by plants enters their body animals so by the process of respiration they release the carbon carbon again to, through their body which 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 comes in the atmosphere so after that the remaining carbon that is stored in their body uh, th that is released into the atmosphere after their decomposition if suppose if they die then uh, after their death the the saprophytes will will act on their body and they all they 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 release this carbon to the atmosphere again so the cycle is completed it started from atmosphere and it ended at the atmosphere so this is very simple carbon cycle but uh, we have to now see the long term carbon cycle see in the long term carbon cycle uh, uh, this is, i told you i i explained you this but the, the process is not as simple that, as i have explained so the, this is this happens in certain cases but in certain cases certain the or, certain organic matter does not get decomposed so it it is deposited in the pt layers of marshy soil or some insoluble carbonates which we uh, which 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 do not uh, enter into the atmosphere directly they are deposited at the bottom sediments of the aquatic systems so so this carbon when deposited uh, in the in the pt layers of marshy soil soil or in the bottom sediments of aquatic system is not available immediately so it will be available only after millions of years after geological upliftment through various processes through various geomorphological processes so when when it will be available again then it will be weathered and then then erosion will take place and then then this these in, uh, insoluble carbonates or the undecomposed organic matter will when erosion when when it will go through erosion then it will enter the water but through water it will enter the rivers and streams so but it will be a, it will take long time to take place so this is the long term carbon cycle another example of long term carbon cycle is the fossil fuels what are fossil fuels friends i you know about these that the living organisms when they die so the certain organic organic matter if it does not get decomposed and if it is deposited deep in the earth and uh, and it after millions of years through various geological processes it turns into the uh, uh, fossil fuels like petroleum natural gas and all these when i all these i you know that the organisms have the carbon in them so all all these unding decomposed organic matter that turned into that were once uh, organic matter but now turned into fossil fuels have the carbon in them and when we burn the fossil fuels the carbon the carbon stored in them is released so this is also an example of long term carbon cycle so you can hear from the diagram that the sunlight through the sunlight sunlight comes photosynthesis take place from the atmosphere carbon dioxide is taken and it is formed in the form of carbohydrate so this this uh, here the carbon is stored now the plants can be eaten car plants can die or these plants can be eaten by the herbivores so when the herbivores take up the carbon or it is decomposed and the carbon is released into the soil which is again 
when when this dead organic matter is decomposed and then is again it released into the at uh, the atmosphere uh, also the animals also respire they release the carbon that that they that they have got after eating the plants so they will release it also another carbon that remains stored in it when they die they will be they will be decomposed and another uh, the, the other stored carbon will also be released so all oh, through all these manners the the process of uh, carbon cycle takes place so here you can see that the uh, that the fossil fuels are being burned so here the fossil then the carbon stored in them will also be released this is the carbon cycle so this process goes on and on and on so they again it is released into the atmosphere and when this again it is released into the atmosphere this carbon dioxide is again utilized by the plants for the process of photosynthesis so this is carbon cycle so after carbon cycle we must see what is the human interference in carbon cycle see human beings are interfering in carbon cycle in a very devastating manner so if you see the you if you see the news uh, you see that the, the 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 topic of climate change is very much burning nowadays so what is the causes of this uh, interference what are the what are the ways in which human beings interfere in the carbon cycle so if you see the deforestation we are cutting the forest so you i i told you in previous slides slides that plants use carbon dioxide for the photosynthesis if there will be no, if there will be no plants then they will not consume the carbon and it will be it will remain suspended in the atmosphere which will which will increase the temperature of our of our earth and will lead to the global warming also in agriculture we do the stubble burning when we when we do not uh, uh, organically treat the leftover uh, crops we simply burn burn it you see the example you might have heard in news the uh, the the farmers of punjab and haryana doing the stubble burning so this is another another example because these 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 this crop residue has carbon in it and when we burn it the carbon is released into the atmosphere another example is the soil erosion through soil erosion the carbon soil carbon is washed into water sources like lakes and oceans direct emission of from burning of fossil fuels now we are using the fossil fuels as sources of energy so through the process of industrialization we are continuously using very, very for, we are continuously using the fossil fuels in very large amounts and due to the burning of these fossil fuels we we are releasing the carbon into the atmosphere in a very large quantity so this is this is also interfering with the work carbon cycle because uh, because the carbon is increasing beyond the sustainable limit so we are contributing to the carbon so the the, the entire process does not remain in a in an equilibrium state so after after industrialized industrial revolution the concentration of carbon has increased from 330 parts per million before the industrial revolution to 384 parts per million after the industrialization so, so you can see to uh, to uh, to what extent we have contributed the uh, to the uh, to the carbon in the atmosphere which has completely interfered which is a clear interference in the carbon cycle so it it is leading to the global warming global warming and climate change so this is the human interference in it so this is all about carbon cycle next is the nitrogen cycle see before doing the nitrogen cycle we must know about the importance of the nitrogen so importance of the nitrogen you might be knowing about this that is it is an essential constituent constituent in protein if you consider the protein then nitrogen forms an important constituent in it in it so living tissue the live it, it is also an, a basic building block of the living tissue if we if we measure the weight of protein then almost 16 percent of the weight of the protein is is constituted by the nitrogen so what is nitrogen cycle nitrogen they see the nitrogen cannot be before doing the nitrogen cycle you must know that the nitrogen can be consumed in elemental form the nitrogen is uh, existing in our environment is in a very abundant form you, you know that almost 71 percent of our atmosphere constitutes the nitrogen so it is it, it constitutes it is 71 percent in its uh, in its volume as compared to other gases so it is important but it cannot be utilized as it is it needs to be fixed so you must know about the nitrogen fixation which is the first step in the nitrogen cycle so first we will see the nitrogen fixation the process of converting elemental nitrogen into ammonia nitrites and nitrate so that it can be taken up by the plants is called nitrogen fixation so the, the organisms can the plants cannot take the nitrogen elemental nitrogen as it is so it needs to be fixed and the process of its fixation that is converting into ammonia nitrates and nitrites and nitrates is called as is called nitrogen fixation so it is the first step in nitrogen cycle how nitrogen fixation fixation takes place see it happens in three ways it is very important please friends listen to it carefully it is fixed by the bio, by microorganisms by industrial processes like fertilizer factories we are producing factory fertilizers so in this way we are also fixing the nitrogen available in the atmosphere also third process is by the atmospheric phenomena like thunder and lightning which lighting which 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 fix the nitrogen to a very small extent 
so we are co we will be covering here by the nitrogen fixation by the bike by my microorganism which is very important from your prelims point of view please listen to it carefully see element nitrogen is converted to ammonium ions first so with what are the organisms what are the organisms that convert this these elemental or nitrogen to ammonium ions so there is there are certain microorganisms nitrifying bacteria free free nitrifying bacterial which remain in, in independent so free nitrifying bacteria example are the aerobic azotobacter and aerobic clostridium please remember please remember their names they are important from your prelims point of view so they 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 do the work of fixing nitrogen they convert the elemental nitrogen to aluminium ions ammonium ions sorry friends so it can also be they, these are free living nitri nitrifying bacteria but this can also be done by certain bacteria that live in a symbiotic relationship so the 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 rhizobium which live in the uh, the 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 root nodules of the leguminous plants they also perform the function of nitrogen fixation so rhizobium also do the function of nitrogen fixation and also nitrogen fixation is done by the blue green algae like anabinus spirulina so please remember their name so this now the elemental nitrogen is converted into ammonium ions now some plants have the ability to consume the ammonium ions to take up the ammonium ions but some plants still don't have the ability to consume it so the ammonium ions are further to be modified so ammonium ions are needed to be converted into nitrite so which which bacteria which organism perform this work is uh, the organism that performs this work is the nitrosomonas so these these convert the ammonium ions to nitrites and then nitrites are converted into nitrates by the nitrobacter so these nitrates in the soil are taken up now these now this fixed form of nitrogen ammonium ions nitrites and nitrates so these nitrates are being taken up by the plants and then converted into amino acids which are the basic building blocks of proteins so plants are further being eaten by the herbivores and the food chain goes on in this way so they through this process when the already nitrogen is fixed then the then the then the fixed nitrogen is taken up by the plants and these plants are being eaten by the herbivores and the herbivores are being eaten by the carnivores so in this process in this way the process of food chain goes on at last nitrogen is returned to the soil in the form of ammonia where the denitrifying bacteria for example pseudomonas convert them into elemental oxygen uh, elemental nitrogen so what happens in the last see every organism that lives here living organism that lives here has to die in at certain point of time so when they they have the nitrogen in them and then when they die then they then the they are their body is decomp their dead organic matter is decomposed by the saprophytes so certain bacteria so they they dead that dead or get through the through 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 their decomposition the nitrogen is returned to the soil in the form of ammonia so there is a bacteria denitrifying bacteria that is pseudomonas uh, pseudomonas that converts into into again built in, into basic elemental nitrogen so this is in this way cycle is completed so here you can see the diagram here the nitrogen is in the atmosphere it needs to be fixed so it how it can be fixed it can be fixed by the uh, the natural processes like thunder and lighting nitrogen fixation can also be by the by the by the industry like fertilizer industry and also nitrogen fixation can be done by certain bacteria that can be free living like uh, i told you uh, that uh, here are the example of free living uh what are their names aerobic azotobacter and the anaerobic clostridium and then also certain uh, certain certain organisms that live in a symbiotic relationship with leguminous plants like rhizobium fix them and certain blue green algae that is uh, uh, anabina anabina and spirulina so in this way it is fixed and then when it is fixed after that certain certain plants consume them however they some plants further need them in certain modified form so they are converted into nitrites so the so from from ammonium ions to nitrates they are con converted by the uh, this this nitrosomonas and after after nitrates they are converted to nitrates by the nitrobacter so this through this now they are now they are consumed by the plants so after that plants plants are being consumed by the herbivores and the carnivores so in this way they are the, this this process goes on and when they die and uh, then decomposers uh, that is pseudomonas certain certain bacteria uh, they they take up the ammonium um, uh, the the nitrogen in them and they denitrify it and they they transport it to the atmosphere so it it is again it again comes in the atmosphere in the elemental form so friends 
this is all about nitrogen cycle next we will do the human interference so human uh, human being is interfering in the nitrogen cycle see if we consider the fertilizers we are continue we are producing fertilizers in large amounts so there is a gas called nitrogen uh, nitrous oxide which is released by them so nitrous oxide but it is a greenhouse gas so it uh, it is also acts as a catalyst in the ozone destruction in the stratosphere that uh, that protects you from ultraviolet radiation and uh, I also you know that the acid rain takes place due to the nitric acid so this is also an adverse effect agricultural runoff the phenomenon of eutrophication in lakes which is harmful for aquatic life this also takes place due to the interference of human beings i will explain this concept in detail in our uh, in our lecture of aquatic uh, aquatic ecosystem so you might be facing difficulty here to understand it i will explain it later so here nitrates so if there are so much there is so much of nitrate existing in our atmosphere and if it it, it contaminates the water uh, it contaminates the water above a particular limit so if there are more, more than 10 parts per million of nitrates in the water then it is it is polluted and if the infants which are which are below the, uh, the who, whose age is below 6 months if drink such water they become seriously ill due to a condition called methe methe methemoglobinemia or blue baby syndrome so it is a problem in which the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood reduces and the and the person may die also due to the illness so if the children drink such water contaminated by nitrates they can suffer through this condition and uh, the, the, the the oxygen carrying capacity of the of their blood can de decrease so this is all about friends about today's lecture if you liked it please like it if you didn't didn't like it please dislike it dislike it please friends share it with this channel with your friends and these videos with your friends so they they they, they might they also get benefit of these free lectures friends if you want to subscribe to the daily notes of these discussions you can whatsapp us at this number 8968426481 because ultimately at the end of the day you need the notes to revise you can't study the whole book or you can't see the videos again and again so if you have the notes then only you can survive and then only you can score a good rank in the exam so you don't if that we are we are providing you these notes so that you don't have to waste the time by by making notes so please if you want to subscribe please message us at this uh, number whatsapp us at this number we will subscribe you to the daily discussions daily pdf discussions of these videos thank you friends thank you very